science fiction is a common genre in films and novels ever since the 19th century. Similar to the fantasy genre, science fiction revolves around something that is not of this world, hasn't been discovered, or invented yet. Science fiction stories could have aliens, such as E.T. Extraterrestrial, monsters, such as Jurassic Park, or superheroes, such as Batman v Superman. Some science fiction stories could take place on a different planet, such as Interstellar, or in a futuristic Earth, such as Back to the Future Part 2. A futuristic Earth. What would our world look like in the future? Many films that take place in the distant future, such as Back to the Future Part 2, Blade Runner, and Minority Report, all have something in common. The technology. From robots, to flying cars, to touchscreen glass. But how do we know we will get to that point? Will there really be flying cars flying around and robots walking on the streets? Well, let's look how far we have come. During the past three decades, new forms of technology has been brought up and advanced. Definitely my cell phone. That would be the most useful. Laptop. I barely watch TV now. It's mostly Netflix through my laptop. So, cell phone, laptop, those are the two main things. The thing for me is simply my smartphone. Because so many things you can do in your phone. It's amazing. It's very, very useful. And, and uh, yeah, it's convenient. Phone. Yeah, phone. I use it for everything, for internet, calendar, phone calls. Calculator. Calculator, <laughs> even, yeah. Anything. Smartphones are one of the most common and useful pieces of technology we Very have well. today. Thank you. Other technology can be used for entertainment or replaces something else. I love the, um, the Oculus Rift and I love the 360 rigs. Like, um, to be able to actually be in that world and where filmmaking is going that way. I've wanted an iPad for a long time. I'm a musician, so I have sheet music on there. It's really great for any um, performing different things. Just swipe it, there, there's page two, there's page three. Oh, gotta go back to page two. Love that. Researchers, known as futurists, study what the future may look like based on how society looks today. They research on things people value and desire the most and they view the data on technology developing over the years. With this information, it helps futurists with their predictions on what our world will look like through a technological point of view. Director Steven Spielberg had the help from futurists to create a futuristic world in his movie, Minority Report, that took place in the year 2054. It gives an interesting look on how the future may look like in 40 years. And many people also have their own opinions of what the future might hold. I think things will become more wireless somehow. A lot less cords and stuff like that, and more touch screen and voice activated things, I think. Because things can always be better and made more convenient. It makes getting things done easier. I feel like essentially that's the use of technology. And I think it's going to be a, a medical implant. It's connected to wirelessly, of course, to your computer or whatever we have then, because maybe that even changed. And it tells you in the morning that, yeah, you slept good or you didn't sleep good. You have to, your, your, your balance of your nutrients is a little bit low on this, so you have to eat this and that kind of stuff. So our health will be very controlled by that kind of device. Back to the Future is actually interesting because I think they did uh, year 2015 or 2016. But I was watching it the same year they depicted when they made it. And it was so far advanced and we are just not there. So, I mean, we're getting there slowly and there's definitely more talk of that. But as far as everything operating up in space and, you know, that we're not quite there yet. I think the next thing that's going to disappear is actually the phone itself. I think people want to actually have phones and whether it's going to be like something that's like a retina display that's actually just thrown onto your eyes. Almost like in Terminator where, you know, when the Terminator is looking at things and like information is popping up like that, you will be able to see your information, all that data and there won't be the tablet. There won't be, people won't be able to see it, but somehow you're gonna be in this whole other world without any physical piece of technology. With a futuristic world with machinery, advanced computers, and other forms of technology, will that benefit our society? Looking at our world today, we are already facing problems, usually with communication interacting with one another. I think, I think any advancement has, obviously it's an advancement because it is beneficial, but there's always that cost. Um, so from the social aspect of human interaction, the more technology advances, we say it's going to connect people, but actually what happens 
is it disconnects people. So we get like an artificial connection. With Instagram, you get the likes and you feel like you're connecting with somebody and that, that's a great advancement, but really you're not actually having meaningful connection. I think it's part of our uh, culture. We live in a very individualistic culture. I think it's part of how we're wired as, as humans, progressing um, as, as humanity. Smartphone makes things more convenient, but then people also say, well, now people text instead of like going out for coffee or like people don't are more on their phones than like noticing what's happening around them. Like people get into like accidents with cars and stuff like that or like uh, they're walking on the sidewalks across the road without the crosswalk like being on because they're on the phone or doing whatever. But I also have my wife at the dinner table and my phone sitting there on the table with me and I think to myself, or sometimes she'll remind me, you know, can this go somewhere else? Or I see her phone on the table and and then someone texts and it's like, it's really important in that moment. What if this is an important text? What about our family? What about our little girl sitting right there as well? You know, she's just as important, way more important. So can the phone wait? Can, you know, can the technology wait? So it can, it, it's good and it has always a downside because there's good and evil happening in the world. So the advancement that we have will be used by both. As each year goes by, new things are introduced. New movie releases, new cars, new smartphones. However, why do we continue to develop our technology? Why aren't we satisfied with something that is only a few years old? Well, I think we get uh, discontent, at least I know I do, with, uh, you know, like my iPad in five years from now, I'm probably going to be looking at a different one, maybe even less, you know. I think uh, we're creative nuts, creative freaks, you know, and uh, we want to see what else there is. We've seen how far we've come in 10 years, so we want to know how much farther can we go, you know, if we keep it up at this rate five years from now, 10 years from now, like what we've done with the iPhone in the last seven years, how, how far can we keep going? What are our limits? Are there any limits? Allure to futuristic movies and, and I think is just part of, we are never content with the moment, we're never happy with where we're at, um, and so these films reflect our, our humanity. Making money is a, is, a, is a big thing of it. You just want to see how far we can go further with it. There must be more, there must be, can be better. But that's, I think the biggest one is, is the money behind it. Because to develop it, you need money. Well, I think some people are very happy. There's some people who are still stuck on like the original iPhone, but we're curious. I think uh, we always want to see what the limits are. That's why we went to the moon, that's why we keep going to space, that's why we keep asking why, 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 is because the human race is curious on what they can create and what they can do and what is actually the limit. There is always that, uh, I think it's the search for perfection. Everyone is looking for perfection in some way. And it shows up in our search for technology. The future may be exciting, yet frightening to think about. We may not know what our world will look like in 40 years, However, we know it will not be the same. Shark still looks fake.